Hello, everyone. I am, just for everyone's <clears throat> name, so that the transcriptor can get our names or whoever's listening, my name is Max. My name is Mike. My name is Chris. My name is Diana. And I'm Paul. And we are recording this for the purposes of capturing an experience that Mike, Max, Diana, and I had. Um, not like just a few minutes ago earlier today and so we are going to share that experience with Chris and, um, and record that conversation um, it, with the intention of like capturing the some of the magic that we experienced so Like, you know, I guess a, a good entry point is to, like, look at what is the subject matter of this conversation? Like, what is it that we're talking about? Right. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very intricate look at masculine-feminine dynamics. Um, and I still, my brain feels a little bit melty after the experience because it culminated in uh, so some pretty powerful emotional releases for Diana, Max, and I. Um, so yeah, I mean, does anyone have like a starting point that you think would be like? Well, let's um, we'll set a little bit of context without divulging any names, but we've spent the majority of the day in a courtroom watching divorce proceedings, um, and you know, experiencing the the energy there and the t and the tension, and so. Um, as impasse, like we take on like that energy and then we are like working it out. So that was kind of the context of the conversation is like this high conflict, like, um, tension in relationships and, um, basically how people get there and what the options are in current reality to exit those scenarios, um, what are like, um, and where responsibility lies on either side and, and so forth, um, which requires a, a, tr a tremendous level of empathy coming from both sides. So um, using that as context, maybe you guys could start with just describing the emotional experience that you had and then we can kind of like get out from there like start at the end Yeah, it still feels like I'm searching for words. Like there's, it's like, I think a part of, like more of a conceptual uh, understanding to, will land, more? Will land yeah. in this conversation, think, but no, go ahead. Um, one of the things that kept like flaring up, like in my consciousness as I was crying was like, of of my relationship to the feminine like brought into my awareness uh so, like a sense of like desperation almost that I, I i wasn't necessarily attuned to before but like the sense that if like if only if i could just like figure out how to do it right then like she would love me and so like all of that energy and attention that went into like throughout the relationships in my life, my mom, you know, like, and, and all my partners, like, um, like the subtle ways that I had made myself wrong and had continued making myself wrong were starting to like become illuminated and uh, I was grieving for those parts of me that were kind of trapped in that 
and uh, and like all I, like all I wanted like wanted was like to love to be loved and for that like exchange to to happen. Um, that's like as far as I feel like I've come in terms of like articulating that. So my like during my emotional release, the thing that was coming up for me was the collective shared pain of of men and like a lot of forgiveness came towards my father and because we were in like a divorce situation where of course it was like man versus woman trying to get custody for the battle uh, or getting battling for the custody and feeling the energetics along that and feeling how much the man just really really wanted his kids and how much the woman was making him wrong or like perpetrating him for being the bad guy or for being crazy um, when really he just had like a lot of love for his kids and just didn't want to lose them and so you know the conversations that we had leading up to the emotional to the emotional release was how men are feeling trapped in society and how they're making themselves wrong and how they almost, and I think this is something that we should elaborate on so everyone gets the bigger picture, um, how men are making themselves wrong, but it's really hard for them to get how to stay in connection without doing it because the feminine is perpetually making them wrong as well for all the, like, the shared pain that was happening. And so what came up for me as the emotion was released and as we found the pinpoint to that was like the pain of my father and of, of men of feeling trapped and having no other way to stay connected and remain open in their relationships with the women that they love the most. And so I guess the best, I think we should talk about like what that conversation was that we had, unless you guys want to share your emotional stuff first, sure. but I think, but I think it, would, it would help for people to understand like the emotional expression was feeling the impact that we've had like men on women and women on men. We got to a moment where we like shared that pain between both parties and like what, like what was the conversation that we had in order to get to that point where we could feel the pain and then forgive each other for it. Do you guys remember what we were saying? So we were talking about <coughs> how men, when they want to stay connected to women in this situation, the only options that exist today now for men is to make themselves is to make themselves wrong for some kind of wrongdoing. And in order to stay connected, the woman will continue to make him wrong and then have complete control over him. Should we do a bit of a lead up to kind of like the historical piece leading up to the end that you're describing? Like in I'm the, thinking, sure. Yeah, because... Go ahead. To contextualize, we were speaking to... The conversation was around the current dynamics between masculine and feminine and really getting a window into the masculine experience in a way um, like in a way that you guys haven't Okay, I just got nervous and flustered. You can talk to me too. And I could talk that to helps. you too. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That probably makes it a lot easier. Yeah. Um, so we were speaking to the female experience of experiencing oppression 
from them and experiencing physical pain or experiencing all the things that have happened in the patriarchy and as a result feeling scared and making the men wrong. Got it. And in so doing, not taking responsibility for how they co-created that expression that they're then making wrong. So the men aren't taking full responsibility for their co-creation? The women aren't. So the, way, so the women aren't taking responsibility. So let me just paraphrase so we can get it. So women, so the, because of all the dynamics, everything that goes on, women feel scared. And then essentially they, in order to feel okay, control the men. Oh. So women essentially feel scared and then they control the men because they feel scared, and the men make themselves wrong for it, and the women don't acknowledge that they create that because the men want the connection. Am I on the right track? Yeah. Okay. Like, the women aren't... Like, we're making the men wrong for things, and the men are colluding in that, making themselves wrong as well. Yeah. And the part that isn't being spoken to is the woman's responsibility and the energetics involved that like suffocate and strangle the man so badly yeah. that his only choice is to disconnect or act out or what have you, yeah. which is the very thing she's most afraid of, yeah. which is a thing she'll then make him wrong for, Again. which he will also agree to. Right, and so it's a downward spiral and then the cycle yeah. keeps happening. And so the yeah. men here were speaking to like, the masculine perspective to shed light on where we may not be taking full responsibility. Something that's salient in relation to that, and that was a, the piece that you were, you were bringing up, Paul, the um, creation of like the, the fears, the nightmares that then the men go out and like destroy to show that they are more powerful than it or like that, that dynamic. Do you remember mm -hmm. uh, that articulation? Mm -hmm. So because the women don't feel safe, like if they, they'll, if they connect to a man and then they're like terrified that he's going to cheat on her. If she can't get over that fear and stop focusing on it, she's going to just judge him and judge him and close off to everything except that expression from him. So eventually he has no choice but to do that. But then when he does it, she'll make him wrong and disconnect. Right. And so what, but what men do is like, if, if like, women are like in Israel like a well like in any in a culture where like everybody's like scared of war the men will go create war and then win to show that war's not scary like to show them that they don't sh sh don't need to be scared of it and to and like so we go we go and create whatever the fears are and then destroy them in order to show like the masculine does that in order to like quench the fear because he can't explain the fear away huh. that's sounding pretty true to me based on my experience too hmm. so I think what would what would help is to put this this frame into like a real life situation so imagine a man and a woman are in a relationship and so what we're talking about now is like most women are showing up in a relationship with the fear that the man is going to cheat on him or some like all these negative or all these about men. or all these negative beliefs but let's say cheating because i think that's like that's a, a, that's a pretty easy one that most people can relate to mm -hmm. um and so the woman's showing up with this fear that the men are going to cheat on him and so because that fear is so I mean, correct me if if i'm wrong or i'm missing something in the explanation because that fear is so prevalent that's always in the woman's mind space like he's going to cheat on me he's going to cheat on me and so the man isn't actually able to connect with the woman because she's 
being entertained by these fear states continually. Right. And so over time, the man will feel that clamp, will feel that energetic clamp of that fear coming into place. Mm -hmm. And because the men are feeling everything from the woman, then over time, he just wants to please, he just wants to connect with the woman. Like he loves her so much. And so when it gets to that point in a relationship where maybe three months, four months go by and they're super deep connected, then all he can feel from her is that projection of that fear of him cheating on him on uh, onto him. Right. And so the only way to meet her, in her and, reality. and meet her in her reality and mm -hmm. connect with her is to actually cheat on her. Mm -hmm. And so then when the man cheats on her, then what happens is the woman makes him wrong based on her fear. Then the man takes that on. The woman continues to blame him. And then the only option for that man is to disconnect. And she already has. And she already has. Right. And so men are stuck in hell perpetually in these relationships with women. I think something important to add in here, um, that, I think that was, that was apt, but it might have gone a little fast too. So I think as far as the like stages in which like she has this fear carrying around in her mind mm -hmm. and so she constantly needs to see actions from him that show her that he is loyal and so that is where the actual physical actions come into place where like hey will you do this for me I don't I didn't see you doing this enough for me maybe you were being this way what did you say to her right. like my mom like you know wasn't Right, but that feels way? interrogative to him, mm -hmm. so he, he withdraws in, mm -hmm. in the face of that kind of energy. Right. And then what happens is if he goes and flirts with a girl, and then she says, well, were you flirting with her? And he's like, yeah, and then she gets triggered, and then she pulls him into her process. Then he's getting connection and her attention. So she's validating him doing the opposite of what she wants. Mm. Because he's getting the connection he wants by being the asshole that she is so scared of him becoming. So making the fear of that, but huh? I haven't actually experienced that. Yeah, because you don't actually go and like fuck other girls, right? Or like flirt with them or be an asshole that way. <laughs> and so what's happening <coughs> from like a trust level is like the woman is essentially trusting is like she's <laughs> setting she. And this is probably like uh, subconscious or unconscious that mm -hmm. she's building a situation to eventually trust the man to test his loyalty that he's not going to leave. Right. And so instead of what happens when the man cheats on her and then still remains connected and is like, hey, we made it through this and we can survive anything, she doesn't take that freedom and doesn't use that test that she's using subconsciously and actually like, I'll be like, okay, cool, now I can trust you. Instead, she makes him wrong. And then the man takes that on and then they disconnect instead of learning that lesson of trust, that they can actually trust each other and not leave each other in the face of like really challenging situations. And so men who just want to feel the trust of women are stuck. Because even if it's not the cheating thing, it could be some other fear. It could be some other fear, and it's over. Well, yeah, right, what really if she's afraid that he's going to become a gaming addict? Like, of course she's going to meet a guy that is, like, displaying all the opposite qualities that she thinks she wants, and really he's, like, a closet gamer. And then she'll find that out later, but she'll make him wrong and stay connected to him and then just pu push him around. Yeah. I'm trying to really sink in and feel how that applies to me, too. It's very subtle. Well, why would someone break up with you over and over again if they weren't trying to get you to be an asshole? Right, and, and that's what, exactly, she would even say that. Right, and I was like, I'm not gonna be an asshole. I'm gonna be here. But I was, you know, there was the trust never sunk in because I wasn't an asshole, and I would refuse to be what I did. Uh, the trust never sank in because I wasn't willing to be an asshole to play up to what she was expecting me to be. Right. And so when she would break up, it would heartbreak me because I didn't do anything wrong, but like, it still sucked. Yeah. I was just being myself and being the man that she really wanted. Right, and in order to do that, you basically the only way that you can do that as a man in current culture is to just let your heart break every day, all the time. Yep. Constant processing mode. Right. Just like getting home, laying in bed, like not really wanting to do anything, but feel 
because if I don't feel, then I'm even more trapped, and it feels horrible, and I feel the pressure, like, cooking in, literally, like, pressing down on my skull and my chest. So if I don't break those pressures and actively use 90% of my attention to process, then I'm kind of fucked. Right, it's no wonder men don't want to wake up. Like, they don't... That makes sense. That's why so many men are unconscious, because it's so uncomfortable to be awake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I nailed it. So people just go off and get themselves drunk and refuse to feel and yeah. like pretend that their lives are going okay. Meanwhile, they're just putting up with a mediocre experience. Right, and then they secretly like take partake in all these high risk activities and whatever to like get some kind of like need for intensity met. Yep. Yep. When if you're living an open open hearted like life is so intense like there's so much sensation just like sitting out here in the yard like all the colors and all the feel like the wind and like the energy of other people it's like super intense like you don't need to go fucking sleep out like you know like yeah. crazy thrilling experiences to get intensity you know yeah for sure so I want to try to articulate this to see if it's like settling in right so the man wants the woman's attention but he's not getting her attention because she's preoccupied by a fear right. that is getting in between like them yeah. and the connection because her attention is like falling on that fear almost right. like perpetually so the way the like re the reward system is all wonky because when because he gets her attention when he does the thing that makes the fear real. So if she's, yeah. like you're saying, if she's afraid of flirting, or afraid of him flirting with other girls because he's gonna like leave her. It's like it's like a, you know, low grade cheating or something right. that isn't as drastic that would completely like blow the thing up. Right. Then, then that like makes that fear real and then she gets upset and when she's upset, she'll give him attention. attention. That's like a short lived, that half life of that relationship is so short because She'll get desensitized pretty quickly to the flirting, and then she, then he's making out. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then they're processing around that, and then eventually she, they're having a threesome, and then he's like fucking other girls by herself, and then she disconnects because he's running. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. And he's done so many shitty things, like that he's like in a fucking pit of self judgment all by himself, because you know? mm -hmm. she's like off, like if you find another next one. like bright light. And then for the women, it's showing up for them at the end of that, like, oh, he just couldn't meet me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He couldn't meet Yeah, me. that was a big piece was seeing how essentially, like, like we're dimming his light through, through the way that we're suffocating him and then making him wrong for that, saying that there are no men out there to meet us. And there's so like you know like with your saying like with, with the with the fact that women are scared and for good reason, there is then that preoccupation with little fears. And the challenge there is that because if they want to remain connected, then he ends up getting stuck in processing hell with her, and the only way out is through her letting go. And so essentially, he's getting exhausted from the processing. And he's getting energetically, like, and actually physically so clamped because she's wound so clamped and she doesn't maybe know how to let go. And that's the only way to release them both. But as she's making him wrong and he's taking that on, then there's no opportunity for the clamp to release. But she can just get him to take on, like, get him to believe that he's the holding the clamp mm -hmm. and then break up with him. And then she feels released. Because she made him wrong and didn't take responsibility herself. So she's like, look at me. Must have been him. We're not a vibrational match. Yeah. <coughs> Until we stand up for ourselves. Right. And then the flood gets open when the woman finally feels it. Right.
this is like I get the conceptual picture now it's starting to like just starting to sink in a little bit but it's, I think it's it's hard to, to the full thing isn't sinking in yet because I'm so used to quote taking responsibility for how I feel or for what I should say for what is felt through me I think that's more accurate here and so because I am always so vigilant about what I'm what's mine and trying to feel that I think that I have so much shit and then I just stay in hell not realizing what's actually happening and so the mental structures that come up as I'm processing are maybe I'm just not seeing something in myself or maybe maybe um, maybe I'm just creating all of this maybe um, and so it was just frustrating as hell because I like I would do my very best to remain connected and resilient at the same time and even though I would do all of those things almost all the time I mm -hmm. the one time where I do actually be authentic and and get in my body and, and the anger comes up I'm like made wrong for it and then like pressed back into myself and then that's when I realized something else had to be at play because it, it had nowhere to go it felt so trapping I felt like suffocated well, it's like you have to walk in this like super narrow balance beam and if you walk in it absolutely perfectly then maybe you can live that way for like a minute I did right I always do mm -hmm. I'm fucking awesome at that because <laughs> <laughs> it probably so doesn't a, feel as good. No, I'm oh, I'm a extremely aware, brilliant, articulate, like unconditionally loving being, and also very powerful. And so, like, the only way for me to do it was to walk the balance beam. But then when I, as like I was, I mastered the art of walking the balance beams <laughs> like a, t a Chinese like Zen <laughs> master. So I got everything I needed. I got. Uh, great sex I got connection I got love um, and the only thing I didn't have was like I, I couldn't pop through right, you couldn't be yourself that was it mm -hmm. that's all that's right. the only price you had to pay is you just edit yourself out of the picture and then let their reality remain intact without you existing in it and then you, you mm -hmm. can survive because your needs will get met you don't right. have to ask right and every time I brought up something that I was frustrated about like no matter what I, no matter what angle I tried to bring it up on Shut it. Shut up! Get back in your hole. Right. In some way, it was always <laughs> spun. It was always spun to. Um, I mean, you got brought up, Paul, a few times because I would try to point some things out that I was seeing that had come from you because right. that's where it came from. But right. just because her connection to you wasn't solid, that she didn't trust the words that were coming out of your mouth. Right. And so then everything that I was feeling was all like all of a sudden invalid. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even though so she even still would tell me your feelings are valid, but then what I was feeling was they weren't. So it was mm -hmm. these huge sense of mixed messages. And then all of a, obviously, where do I go? I'm fucked up, and mm -hmm. I'm not seeing clearly here. Right. Mm -hmm. So even and I'm not feeling good, so I must not be seeing clearly. Mm -hmm. So even if you're doing the work and like feeling all of your stuff, it still feels like you're trapped. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what was happening. And you're also taught that you're probably doing it wrong because you're probably not as emotionally or, you know, skilled. You're probably not as spiritually connected. And you're probably not yeah. as good relationally and probably she's right. Mm -hmm. And so probably you should just, <laughs> just own that listen. you're wrong <laughs> yeah. and learn from her. Yeah. Yep. But then ultimately, and when I that's her, not an energetic system that's going to feel good to her. Or me. Or you. Right. And when I try, when, some, uh, when I would share things and then, like, share things out of, like, I'm asking for help like it was an odd like desperation here I don't feel good and here's my story about why I think I don't feel good and I'm confused and it was it kind of came back to like well how are you creating it what thoughts are you thinking mm. every time and it would get so mad and so I would try to change well, my thoughts like change your story thoughts. Mm. right so you're totally it must be, a, it must be your, your story experience. yeah exactly yeah. it must be my story like and then I'm but then I'm kind of like how do I get feel like I can get the truth of the matter out but if my we don't even wrong. create stories unless we're, they're like, except based on what we're feeling mm -hmm. right so 
you said like that's not an energetic system that would even feel good to her. Mm -hmm. So at the same time, it's like what she wants, but it's not what she wants. So there's like a double bond. It's what she right? thinks she wants, and so she's training the men in a particular way that won't get her what she actually wants. Because it's a conclusion her mind has arrived at that will make her feel safe. But the mind is incorrect because it, the once, mind is wrong. Once you <laughs> once you realize that reality, you still don't feel safe, right. and then it's like. It's your fault. Right. And I would notice too, like, I would consciously, like, I got, I got really good at being able to, um, like, manage my own internal experience because I became such a fast processor that, like, I would feel myself trying anything I could possibly do to feel free. Mm -hmm. Right. And what would happen was I would completely disconnect from her and then I would feel free and I'd feel great and she would break the fuck down. Yeah. And be like, Why don't I don't feel good? Why is this happening? I feel like you're making me wrong. Right. I feel like I'm you're making me the bad guy. I feel like you don't love me and I'm like, None of those are true. And but then I would to comfort her, then go back like, open, open, energy energy back back open my energy back and then yeah. it would woo and then I'd feel comfortable for a bit because I have the connection. Right, because you're then like after, wobbling into it, but right. then she feels good and you're down here at the bottom. Right. And then she leaves you to climb out of it yourself. Right. right. And exactly. then because every time that happens, she's losing a little bit of trust for you. Right. Every time he compromises and every yeah. time he compromises himself internally, mm. then Tom, she her body her body loses trust for him. And so either way, it's like a lose-lose. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was always wondering why she would be like, I feel great, I don't know why you're not feeling good. I'm like, why aren't I feeling good? Why aren't I feeling good? I because you aren't feeling trust being extended to you. So you will always feel like shit if you're in a connection where the trust isn't being extended. Mm -hmm. Right, it felt good in like those spare, like intimate moments. And then outside of those, Right. Felt you, I was constantly processing. Right, but you cling to those like a fucking crackhead. Right, exactly. Like to those moments, and that's the desperation he's talking about that is so normalized in a man's experience now. Yeah. That like it like wreaks havoc on our ability to process our reality. Yeah. And we don't even know that you feel that way. Right. right but when I tried to tell her that I felt that way, I was not listened to, I mean, and it took it took me finally like sitting down and be like okay here's what i need and want right now i want to tell my story and i want you to just listen and i just want you to hear and understand what i have to say is that possible she's like yes and so i tried to explain it and even as i was explaining it like it did not feel like it was landing no because she got triggered Right, and then either and collapse in the victim or just, closed off. Yeah, yeah I don't so know. she just like lets yeah. it go in one ear and out the other. She <laughs> says she's still listening. Yeah. But you can feel it not landing. No, oh, and she's answering texts and shit. And, yeah. And mm. I mean, there was a time that she put her phone down and said, okay, I need to take care of that. You have my attention now. And I was just kind of like, then I'm kind of like confused because I'm like, okay. Like, do I back up? Because like, she fucking like, missed half of it. Like, right, like, and I am like. like you're not going to be able to make it land now. Right. So, but she's like, I'm trying to. Right. And so then she gets to keep, yeah. like, her perfect reality. Meanwhile, yeah. you're not included in it because she's not seeing the pain that you're in. Uh -huh. Or her part in creating it because you're wrong for feeling it. And it got warpy because those words were never used. It was always like, I'm not making you wrong, I promise. I'm well, because obviously we know better than to make you wrong. But right. then we're not <coughs> aware that subtly and energetically we still are. Right. And that creates power struggles and an eventual collapse. Remember when I said at, at the tail end of our journey, I said, like, well, Chris has everything he needs right now. He has friends, he has food, he has water, he's not hungry, and Chris feels like shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was, like, so confused. <laughs> right. Yeah. There's not really an excuse for that. Right. But we've, like... We live in a reality where that is considered normal, mm -hmm. and you should just shut the fuck up. Right. And basically express quietly <laughs> and then not get listened to, or quietly express to loudly who? and then get villainized. Quietly to who? Well, then you talk behind your back to the guys about the And then you're the an girls, asshole, because you, 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 don't you dare talk about your relationship to the guys, because yeah. they will give yeah. you the worst advice ever. Yeah. 
and any advice you get from another guy is the wrong advice. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> it's either like it's either your the advice you get is either be an asshole or trap yourself more. Right. Don't you dare talk to your mom either. Right. Because she if she's giving you this the woman's secrets then like I don't have a handle so you can't. So then he feels isolated. Yep. And really lonely in his experience. Absolutely. And so, like, talking about this, like, for my emotional release reminded me of, like, seeing even myself, like, seeing all the men, like, my father, my grandfather, um, just all the men who are, like, connected where their light is, like, squeezed out of them, and they're in a marriage, and they have no way out of that marriage. And so they have to get a divorce. And that's kind of the status quo, is that they just slowly die inside and take it because there's no better option. Right. Because they're going to feel alone either way. Because they've spent so much time in that marriage that they haven't really built the relational skills that they need to like go and build a tribe and do whatever. So they don't feel confident in their ability to do that, to connect with others either. And with the increase in control, then there's further isolation and disconnection. And so where do you go? Mm-hmm. So that misery becomes like a safety blanket of sorts, Mm -hmm. because although it's uncomfortable, at least it's familiar. Right. Yeah. And that's less scary than the unknown of leaving. And so we were having that conversation, and Diana fully let that in. Yeah, it was, and, it was beautiful. And it was the mo- it was so beautiful. She took in all of the like what it felt like to me, like all of the responsibility of the woman's end of that. Because men, like men, still have responsibility for making themselves wrong. That's on them. But even if they did that in today's society, the woman would still make them wrong. And Diana shifted that by taking full correct. This is my perception. You took in that fully on behalf of all women. And it just flowed through you, just like, poof. and then she released it. Then I started crying. Mike started crying, and we just like flowed with it. Paul, you were having emotional release as well. Yeah, it was it was such a profound interaction because like Diana and I were like so connected, and we were like working out this like really tricky stuff in conversation, and there was so much emotion going back and forth, but we were both staying with it, and we got to this like like point of clarity like where we both like apologized to each other and forgave each other and like our bodies just started trembling and like um it was so powerful uh like my whole body was vibrating for 15 or 20 minutes afterwards um and yeah it was amazing to feel like the unilateral forgiveness that like arrived into the space like after the exchange. Yeah, and for me that that interaction was so beautiful and I'm so honored that I get to spend so much time with you two and that I've been like, you know, an intimate like witness of the you know blooming of your relationship because within that like desperation that I was I feel like I was largely unconscious to like I didn't realize how much that was like run, running under the surface like your ability to take that in like illuminated that because like it was the contrast based on the spark of hope that like that's possible that you could take it in like showed me that like <laughs> Like, that desperation doesn't have to persist. It doesn't have to be the way it thinks. And the fact that we can still remain connected after that, after something of so much emotional intensity, and this is what everyone's afraid about, about having these conversations for the fear that they'll get abandoned and to create a family-type dynamic with connections with everyone where like we have that stuff and then we can forgive each other and move on five minutes later is so, so healing. Yeah, it's amazing. 
And body started shaking and crying and releasing all over again, just in hearing it retold. And I feel like right now, I feel it's like scary, but now this anger is like starting to like that, that emotion of like being like repressed for, I don't know how long this has been going on for men. Like I can feel that in my body and having it be expressed without a woman making me wrong for it is like, it, it's feeling like so so much better it's still like a little like I, I feel like a little scary of like oh no am I being an asshole like am I being mean but now it's just like I can feel the power underneath of that and I feel like my masculinity returning <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking awesome it's like finally like <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> But that was interesting for me to say, because even as I said that, I was like, ooh, like, I can, nice little I, I can feel it because I was still making myself wrong, but I could feel from the clamp that she released that it's probably, like, now I can say that and feel safe in it. Yeah. Oh, my God. starting to land in your body a little more oh uh, well a little bit i'm sort of like being prepped for it to land like the tension is like being like brought up and like to a, sort of front and center now yeah. and i'm like thinking back to things and i think for me i i need to get past some element of benevolence that i usually have towards women because like hearing her stories growing up as a woman it was so hard and like so traumatizing and so I most of what happened was me holding space for her to release her childhood stuff that was extremely traumatizing and so to have like to have such a strong side of like show, to, to like show her how she she was limiting my freedom after all that happened, felt wrong for me to even, like, consider as a possibility. Right. So I'm getting through that and being like, well, she was trying her best, like, like, yeah, so there's just a block for me there. Exactly, that's what we were speaking to, that's what was, yeah. like, such a, why it was such a profound release, because, like, they just don't know how it's affecting us. How, Got it. The, how the way that they are holding their judgments toward us Got it. and their expectations upon us affect us. And they don't see that it's driven by a root fear hmm. that exists. Got it. Okay. So... So they don't see it. So it basically took one woman to like in men's presence to see it and then to acknowledge it right. and then and to the, feel it. And to let it in, yeah. yeah. And to feel it. And then as her clamp releases, so can ours. Right, and so Around their it. bodies like, she's, were shaking. Because she's because she's not aware of what's happening, there's still like compassion yeah. for like her not knowing. Yeah. But if we look at what's actually happening is even if we're not making ourselves wrong that clamp is still making us wrong, which puts us into a state of like self-wrongness ourselves, even if yep. we're doing the work. There you go. Okay, I get it. I get it. So now. there's still there's still compassion for it, but cool. it's still like it's still happening. Gotcha. And so we have to like collectively we have to move through that and have like people in relationships have to have the conversations that we just had. Well, yeah. And stay with each other. Yeah. As the clamp releases, and that way it can get healed. That feels right to me. Yep. My body just shot me a clear yes on that. I can feel like my level of certainty coming back as well. That is fucking awesome. And like feels feeling so and like good. feeling the things of like, oh no, am I being an asshole by having this level of certainty? But that's the whole thing that we're talking about. Is that when men would come with that, women would make them wrong. 
and then the men yes. would back out from their power in order to s remain connected. I got called arrogant like two or three times by my mom and another woman in one of my mom's friends this weekend Be uh, because I was speaking with such certainty and like precision around what I uh, saw in certain aspects. I always, I'm always just like uh, confident, arrogant, whatever you want to call it. Right. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, exactly. That, and that's what I. That's how I. You say it. arrogance. I say so confidence. Because if you weren't yeah. speaking but up just enough, whatever you would say. have been like you would have been too far on this side, and you wouldn't be confident enough. Yeah. You know. Sure. So where there's no line. There's like, no where line. You, it's actually an anti-line. It's right, like exactly. I can be in the middle and be like, you're not really confident enough in your abilities, but you're an arrogant asshole. Actually, yeah. Just shut the fuck up. Right. <laughs> go back. Go back. Go back in your box. Yeah. Make yourself yeah. wrong, and then. You know what? You just weren't. You just weren't a good fit. You know, yeah. there, you definitely you weren't a vibrational match, and you weren't ready for me because I'm doing the work and you're not. Yep. I'm like laughing because it's so true, and also like angry as fuck. There's a shit that looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's funny, I, I, I let that anger go, and there's a wave of fear that comes in after I be angry. It's uh -huh. sort of like this, watch out, what's good, bad is going to happen. Oh, man, that's interesting. And so we as men also have to work through that. Yeah. Of, like, all that conditioning that we took on. Man, as I men from the systemic wrongness that women are making men wrong. Ever since... I had a similar... I had a similar thing um, with one of my, my past girlfriends. I was just like, I need to get angry, and I got super angry. She's like, yeah, you can be angry. And then I got super angry, and then she just made me wrong afterwards, and then yep. I just sunk again. Yep. Yeah. And I, it's so hard because she gives you the permission to be angry and then makes you wrong for what she gave you permission for. Right. Right. So then our bodies don't feel safe enough. No, of course not. We're never going to release that around her again. And so it's going to be trapped until that's what happened to me. <sighs> Generational shit, man. This, is... this anger, like this anger one runs real deep. Uh -huh. I was reading conversations with God and in it, um, God talks about how women used to rule. That used to be the leaders and would like only let the strongest men fuck them and so the the I'm just guessing here that a lot of a lot of the like primal like strong urge like in the men got put into our genes and then in this society all of it got clamped down and it's been holding this clamp for like a couple hundred years and so there's like several generations of this anger that's like is passed down and then like continued to clamp so I mean, that energetic's still kind of true, but just nobody's telling the men that. Right. And so the men feel yeah. like trapped. Right, the men have this, no like, idea. <laughs> yeah. Underneath this, like, plank. Uh-huh. And so there's a bunch of, like, softies and running around or are all dead inside and teaching their children how to be dead inside. Teaching them that it's maturity. Yeah. Oh, he's just maturing. No, he's fucking dying. Watch my brother, he's dying. And I tried to bring that up around my mom, and she got way too, she's too tender to take any kind of feedback regarding that kind of matter or any responsibility for my brother's entrapment. Right, and so if you share something even really gently that causes an emotional reaction in your mom, yeah. immediately you're told to be quiet. Mm -hmm. What did you do wrong? Dad says, what are you doing wrong? Mm -hmm. Well, Dad doesn't say much to me anymore, actually. Not anymore, it's yeah. Good. But you had to fight for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't come for free. No. Or she'll get triggered and then you'll get sucked into her process about it. Right. Well, that happens, too. Because mm -hmm. I can't really avoid it when I'm at home. 
then I'm ma then I'm being made wrong for wanting to spend time alone and not be engaged. <laughs> so it's like a quadruple entendre. Why don't you do the things that I tell you and then listen to me while I judge you for not doing it quite right? <laughs> mm. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I, <laughs> you know, maybe I should look at that one. <laughs> <laughs> So what, I feel like we've reached a point in the conversation where it's like, I'll just ask, like, what can I do about that? We don't know. Like, We're still figuring it out. I think, like, humanity is going to have to figure out what we do about that. Because, the like, we've been in this process where, like, up until like 60 years ago, men were being like pretty big dickheads. Mm -hmm. Like, they ran the show, they made all the money, the women were trapped in the house, like, kind of either financially or psychologically, they were getting abused, like, mm -hmm. it's fucking shitty. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And then we had like the psychedelic movement, the feminist movement, and like, for the first time, like, women started to get to be right like collectively mm -hmm. be right about like the things that men had been doing wrong to them got it mm -hmm. makes sense and like humanity absolutely had to have that like there's no way that we could have progressed without like collectively without that like the women needed to be able to band together and just get as angry as they fucking wanted cause like they were fucking angry <laughs> like <laughs> Yep. Yeah, and for good reason. Yeah, like it had been happening to them for like for as long as humans had civilized, we had been civilized. Like it, I mean, it had been happening to them for a long, long time. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, so that pattern it only just reversed, and mostly in American culture, it it hasn't even shifted in the rest of the world yet. Oh, that's why it's confusing. Right, that's why it's so confusing, because America's in a bubble. Right. Mm. I see. <laughs> and I so see. America's, <sighs> like, inverse to the collective. Right. And then women take the collective, and other countries, too, and say, oh, we're being oppressed, we don't have as many rights as you, blah, right. blah, blah, and so there's no... And their bodies validate that because of the generations of oppression in women pre yep. prior yep. to the last, like, 60 years. Yep. And really, like, maybe 15 or 20 years, like, women's, like, rights are still, like, expanding. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. But in a lot of ways, at the expense of men, which is, like, still okay, ultimately. But we feel the, but, like, you, like, this, like, you guys, you men, like, in that, your age group in America, as males, like, are feeling it the most. Because your mothers never, they didn't even send you out into the world with a sense of like, he can take care of himself and I trust that he's gonna go do something great. They sent you out into the world going like, I hope my poor little son can make it. And never let go of worrying about you that way. Even though you were the fucking highest achievers, like, you know, by all of the standard ratings. <laughs> <laughs> there was no other scores you could have scored higher at to, oh, there make, were, her, though. to make her believe that you <laughs> were more capable and she still didn't trust that you were capable right. out in the world and so every woman you meet you already have that on you yeah. and so if she projects that onto you like, if you can't release it, she's required to re project that onto you. But even if that wasn't released, even if that didn't exist for the man, the women are still largely projecting a similar, like, crippled image onto men. And so the, as free as a man might be, like, he's not free because, like, the, the, like if, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah, so either way, it hits you from either side. 
Right. Right. Okay. And I ran the problem of even though I achieved as high as I possibly could, there were still things that I didn't achieve as high as I could have at. Right. Still. There's always so, something there's else. There's no and, way and to you win. Go, and right. you're judging yourself about that, and your mom is like, yeah, you could have done better. Right, you used thinking to. Being, she's, thinking she's encouraging you. Right. And so, <laughs> well, I've been, lately I've been good about not judging myself for that and standing up for my decisions. Right. But then I'm made wrong for thinking that, telling right. her that she's a bad mom. Well, and you're arrogant angry. now because I'm you an actually are speaking as if you like from a place of conviction, right? Like, <laughs> which is required to fucking do anything in this world. Exactly. <laughs> that's so, the th- that's the, the shit. Don't you dare do it with anybody right. like close to you. Right. And so, like, I speak with conviction about anything I know about, and then it's like yeah. you don't know this, you don't know that, you don't know how how people feel, blah blah blah, and blah blah blah. You can't feel other people, and blah, blah. right. And then she's it's like, everything. "Well, I'm a woman, and like I know." Right, and then she expects me. Yeah. She's like, and "Why are you broke?" Well, right. we're taught that we're exactly. more exactly. Why are you broke? Right. <laughs> the whole. And so this is what's happening. Conviction. So like the way that this is impacting men, like let's say like entrepreneurs or something, they're making them. They're taking on the wrongness wanting to get the validation of their woman and using that as pressure to build their business. Yes. yes. So yep. this is like completely embedded into their lifestyle. Yes. And if they were to stop doing that, their whole life would fucking die. Yes. Whoa. Could you hit me could you give me that pressure system again? So if a man is in this is in a relationship and he's making himself wrong, yeah. the woman's making him wrong. And so he doesn't want to be wrong anymore. And so in, in opposition to that wrongness, he's using that pressure of wrongness to, be right. to strive to be right through his business through his business accomplishments. So he'd be doing something probably completely different as if he was if he already knew his worth. Yeah. And so as soon as he would get like his business is built into the fact that he's like that he's not okay that he's wrong. Yeah, and so in a lot of ways, his genius isn't getting exercised because he's running on fumes. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. But he's being really clever. Yeah. And the woman's and like, oh, I'm inspired. Like, oh, I'm inspiring you. I'm inspiring you. And but actually, she's clamping him But actually, she's clamping him into, him into hell. Yeah. Into desperate, like, striving toward money. And then you go to a couple of men's conferences and they tell you, you know, like, you got to be willing to kill. You got to be, like, willing to go for that money like you were willing to kill someone. And then yeah. they kind of like take on that level of like hardness and then like go after the money in opposition to the c- persistent wrongness. So the wrongness is still there and that is influencing all the energy in their business. Right. And so they have to put in mass amounts of effort right. if they were completely aligned with that and like like they felt completely embodied and worthy, then that stuff that they were looking for would probably have been naturally without mm-hmm. all this like tainted fear based effort. Right. But they're also, and they're escaping into their work because there's so much pressure at home that the only place they get peace is maybe if they can get away and dive into that and create something amazing enough. And then try harder and harder and it. harder. So, and then eventually, so the business is propped up by all this effort. Right. So over time, it's hell at home <laughs> and hell in the business. Mm-hmm. And then, always full right, and then so when the guy finally makes it and's like, oh, I don't want to work anymore. Like, let's finally hang out and like be together, honey. She's like, I can't fucking stand you. I want a divorce. Ooh. And then the man's like, I was just about to say fuck. something like that. Or if, yeah, if you get if you get if you're successful enough to retire or build a passive income business then your relationships with women go straight down the drain because everything you were using to like fuel them is gone. Mm-hmm. And there's also just no way to win because you're meant to strive, but then if you don't give her enough attention, then like... Then she just goes and gets yeah. it from another man and t- tells you you should be okay with Polly. Yeah. Or that you're not a vibrational match. And then right. the woman will repeat this cycle yep. over, well, men, well, and, men it's and women. Well, because she it's his fault, so she just right. goes look for a better one. She's like, he's not, he's not, he's not, he's not evolved enough. Right. Yeah. And then she'll go on to do this again and again and yeah. again. And if she had, like paid attention to the patterns, like the same thing would happen. Yeah. Or they get married and then they just ignore it. Right. And then the man stays in hell and then they re- rationalize it somehow. And well, well the women's clamp, the women's clamp too. Yeah. yeah. And so then they just like rationalize it or something. 
well, that's normal because that's just the way it is and no one's happy and it's just, you just do the work and you just... But if we take pictures with smiles and post them on Facebook, everyone else will think we're happy. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Then, yeah, then no one will question yeah, us. Then so we'll be, you know, mm -hmm. then we'll just invite people over every now and then and then hang out with them and have our little friend groups and, and then, then we'll, uh, we won't have to face our partners and, and then, then we'll do some relationship coaching. And then we'll have some kids so then we don't have to... Right, then we get really busy. ...worry mm -hmm. about And then we get other. our value from our martyrdom. And then we'll say, oh, look at our beautiful child. They're so good at everything. Mm -hmm. and, and then project everything, project onto, everything onto that child <laughs> yeah. then he grows up doesn't like it anymore and then he's all of a sudden delinquent and crazy and broke and took yeah. money from them and comes home and blah 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 right fuck <laughs> 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 whoa yes <laughs> whoa Whoa. I'm starting to see this really clearly now. And so if the man is awake and he can process, then the woman gets to be in heaven, but the man is in hell. Because the man's not awake, nothing gets processed, and they're both in hell. Right. So the women are loving these awake, vibrant men, and are just they're preaching just the life out of them, talking very highly about us. Right. But then we're still feeling like shit. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, it's like uh, I, I hear all these people talking about me, and they're like, oh, you're so Chris, you're so awesome. But everyone so around us is happy, so we just block out that and yeah. then just feed off of everyone else's happiness. Well, some yeah, for a while until it realizes it's not It works until mm -hmm. it doesn't. It doesn't. Right, it doesn't, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> Oh. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, that was so intense. I mean, the conversation itself was just so powerful to take in layer after layer after layer after layer of, you know, of, of like the male perspective and to actually take responsibility for the ways that we're co essentially co-creating or creating the very thing that we don't want. And so it just felt like layer after layer after layer after layer got peeled away. And then I didn't even realize Like that I was making men wrong. Like I didn't even think that I was doing that because I know oh. better. Right. Here. <laughs> yeah. And I actively, like I actively oh, yeah. so work on that. I'm sure. And yeah. so I, I, I had no idea the amount of wrong making I had done just in regards to you know, like my experience of, of not being met, you know, in the past in the ways I wanted to by men and, you know, making them wrong for that or not being able to meet me or whatever story it was, which was validated in my external reality, but I wasn't seeing the energetics underneath it, like how I was right. creating that. And so... In connecting, like, in the... The part that you were speaking to, Paul, where we were connected, it was just, it was so intense because I had, we had sorted through all the layers and then we were connecting and speaking to each other and... Like as both sides of the whole, like, yeah. it was like just... Yeah, we were like in this bubble and it was just like soul to soul, like. Yeah. Exactly. So cool. And so. That's awesome. I think the first. 
What was the first statement? Was that mine? You asked if I had anything else to say. And then I said, I'm sorry for what all the men have done, for all the things the men have done. And, yeah, because we, I had just taken on, essentially, my full responsibility as a feminine. Right. And then I asked if the, the guys wanted to share anything else that they wanted to be witnessed in or heard in or met in, anything else, on behalf of the feminine. And Paul shared that he was sorry for what the men have done to the women. And it was just, you know, that was a big emotional release of just feeling that, feeling that apology and taking that in. And then, what was the next part? And then you said you're sorry for what the women have done. Yeah, then I apologize. Yeah, and then I, like, felt into, like, what the women had done and apologized for that. And then Paul said that he forgives me. And then I forgave him. And so it was this, like, it, like the, the intensity of the presence and the power of that. Like this, like, you know, like our field was so palpable. And then it was like this full... Like, I'm shaking <laughs> just talking about it again. It was this full, like, acceptance of responsibility on both sides. And a full apology. And then this full forgiveness. And for me, it was just like, like, my body was shaking and just waves and waves and waves of sobs. And then, like, gasping breath and trembling and there's so much energy in my hands and I started getting like the you know the techno where I clan like just uh, there's so the much yeah. energy it was just and then I'm hearing the men releasing and crying and it was just this huge release and as I said I didn't even realize that I had been holding men as wrong <sighs> right because I know better right that must have been so hard because you you know better and how would you do it if you know better <laughs> And so we then got to, we then got to like, we kind of all were just connecting and crying and then we circled up and we're hugging and then Paul put me in the middle and the men were hugging around me and he invited me to take in their forgiveness because really <laughs> like they don't blame us and they love us and they forgive us and they just want connection with us and I noticed like my resistance to taking that in and I realized that in this process then I was uh, then I was making the women wrong like for what we were doing and then got to reconnect to my innocence because like like I'm not trying to do any of this like my intentions right. Was so pure right. and so innocent. Right. And that's the hardest so part for us. Yeah, we, we never lose sight of that. I know, and so yeah. that's, <laughs> because that's what's so hard. Was because yeah. we care so much totally. and we're trying so hard. Totally. Letting in the level of pain that men are actually experiencing, it's just it's it's so heartbreaking, and then it shatters our reality. <sighs> But it has to be in order to allow space for him in that reality. Right. And so then I got to take in their forgiveness and I remember my innocence. And it was just like this ripple effect of kind of cascading forgiveness and understanding and both sides yeah, feeling and I think, seen. Yeah, and I think you said it was so beautiful. You're like, so that means like everybody can just be forgiven mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like yeah how does that feel uh, <laughs> <wow>. <laughs> yeah, and 
that started for me with forgiving my dad over this weekend. So it's been a huge, oh, right. intense, oh. like beautifully perfect culmination. Yeah. That just released before you arrived. Oh, that's amazing. Like, and like that, the, what we want more than anything is to forgive you, but we can't forgive you until you feel it. Cause then nothing changes. Is oh, because we're not letting in the forgiveness. Right. Well, yeah. no, then you're not feeling the impact of your creation, and then you're going to create the same thing because the imprint on your body hasn't actually been stored there for you to change your behavior. Oh, you're saying that she needs to, like, yeah. essentially receive and let go before you're able to have the forgiveness land in a way that's... Well, right, you took... You or else felt just the pain to get of validated. all the men. Right, exactly. You felt the pain of all the men in, in the reality that you were helping create by making them wrong, and then because you felt how impactful that was... Even though your wrong making was a subtle energetic thing that led to the entrapment, the the initial little bits of it are very subtle. That's why we don't mm -hmm. catch it, mm -hmm. and even you don't aren't aware of it because mm -hmm. it's tiny at first, but then it cascades. Mm -hmm. So if you didn't feel the full impact of that entire creation, then your reality wouldn't shatter, and then nothing would change, and mm -hmm. then the whole cycle would start over. Exactly. Which is why I was angry over this weekend about like the connections that like as she was like shifting from me. To the other right, because you're like, hey, 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 we're not done, and like, right. I'm still down here. But he was a badass, and he was <laughs> like, your friendship is more important to me than that, and he left, and then it forced her to collapse and start to feel the pain that had ha that had been created there, and so now, because she's felt so much, now I'm actually willing to like step into presence and talk to her, and then she'll have to feel more, and then when she does feel more, then we can then we can get we can drop in to a place of actual forgiveness, which is what everyone really wants. Right. Yeah. But that's why I'm, I can't budge with my mom because she's unwilling to feel anything. She's make, she just makes me wrong for it. And so there's no room to move. So like the, the extent to which the forgiveness happened is the extent to which one, the men can start being men and not mm -hmm. giving in to all the women's desires. And then two, for the women not to leave the man and leech off of another man so that they're not actually swimming so there's a twofold twofold process the man has to disconnect and then the woman has to like swim and tread water and feel all of that and then they have to come back together at least that's what I've noticed okay I think ideally like I, I hope to move through it without the disconnection but that's kind of well, yeah, that's been how it has had to yeah. be. It's always had that's to be that way. Like, be. they've always had to disconnect. Yeah. Right. And it's always had to be a break. And they could come back together, but they usually don't. Yeah. Right. Like, only now are people starting to, like, be like, wait, this actually shouldn't be, this conflict shouldn't be bigger than our relationship. And they're kind of staying in abuse cycles yeah. and calling it conscious relating. Mm. Yeah. Because <laughs> <Yeah. But laughs> they're stuck in processing hell. Yeah. Right. right. But they are working out some of the stuff that people, we people haven't been working out before because like mm -hmm. before like it would just either you clamped or you broke right and that was that right it's, it's almost mm -hmm. it's a, i mean because we we worked a lot we did work a lot of masculine and feminine stuff out in that relationship mm -hmm. no right. doubt yeah. about it it wasn't enough for me to actually be free which is ultimately why i had to break off but but it was enough well to, you like, were working the, your okay. resistance to being like to, like completely imprisoned. I was what? You were working out your resistance to be your resistance to being like completely like clamped by someone. Right. right. Exactly. And Which the more is like that, for yeah. a man, like you have to work that out first. Like you have to be willing to let her cl clamp you completely, otherwise you're you can't really be like relate to her as a man. But once you display that your ability to hold her in that in the fullness of her clamp mm -hmm. yeah. then you have to negotiate your release because like right. otherwise she's just going to keep you in it right yeah. and think it's a beautiful relationship right and she's feeling she'll good think the it's whole time. beautiful but you're like right what the fuck? right mm -hmm. and well with her in those peak moments like it's when beautiful it yeah beautiful. and then she keeps then you like just like kind of addicted to those like moments when she drops all of her judgment yeah. And like lets you in whenever yeah. she has a desire or a need. Yeah. And then you're just like waiting. Yeah. Emotionally for her to open. Mm -hmm. And then, oh man, this is making sense now. That's probably why she said that she was with me out of feeling need too. 
because she would open up to me when she did need something. But she had to keep you starving in right. order to make you like available on demand. Right. And, and then I wasn't willing to be starving anymore, and then and things then, started well, then to get rocky. You're a dick. And right. I'm gonna go find your friend. Right. And you're lower vibration because you're not taking. No, nope. we're not a vibrational. You're not a vibrational match because you're not putting up with it anymore. Mm-hmm. So women do have the control. Did you just sign into your? Oh. Hey, what's going on? How are you? How's it going, man? things. <laughs> I've been asking reality to explain this to me. So here we are. Yeah, it's a fucking doozy, isn't it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've been like, why? Okay, it's like fucking, the fucking God, like, most confusing why? Ever. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've been serious. shouting at reality yeah. to explain this to me for like a month. So, thank you. Another uh, interesting thread was the energetic origins of the douchebag. Oh, yeah. Remember that? I'm going to take a leak and then I want to hear that. I'm interested in this, too, because the douchebag is like a fe- is a thing that women use. Yeah. Uh-huh. So and ma- and wonder, because men right. told them to. And discard. And men who... Uh, and yeah. men yeah. Yeah. to clean themselves yeah, out clean if they don't want them to so get pregnant. they smell it's better and... Or if they don't want to get pregnant. It's for hygiene, because, you know, women are messy. So so the douchebag is used (laughs) by women to hold men in a blame state? Yes. And then they call the dudes douchebags. Wait, what? What was the first one you said? (laughs) That women use the douche, like, an actual douchebag to hold men in a blame state. Yeah, because they're doing it for the men, because they think the men are going to judge their pussy. That's what they call the bad douchebags. As a reminder to that... How the the origins of the douche? That's what we can call the title of the podcast: the origin of douche. Oh my goodness! I was thinking uh, everyone can be forgiven. Aww. The origin of douche: colon, everyone can be forgiven. Yeah. Diana, I just want to say how fucking awesome you are. <laughs> and how much I appreciate you, like, willing to go there Aww. and release it. My body feels so much better. <laughs> <laughs> and I, like, I mean that. Mm. Pleasure. Yeah, definitely a lot of energy moves through that whole interaction. Stop. Mm. I love you so much. Mm.